Give us an explanation why the crew is in Yosemite. What are they doing? Turn the storyline. You hear the sound? The sound will build as we talk because there are trucks right now moving into position. They're moving a giant wall. At least I think it's a giant wall. Of course, not compared to that giant wall, but to our little man-made walls. 60 by 40 foot uh, wall, uh, uh, fiberglass wall, which I will climb and we will be shooting past the wall looking at Yosemite and theoretically it's supposed to look like El Cap, like I'm climbing El Cap, part of the movie magic, but right now they're moving it into position and the excitement for me right now is will that trick work? It should work. Will the wall get into position? Will anything break? Will all the people appear? We've gone through a number of phases on this film. I've dreamed this story I have helped write the screenplay along with David Lowry and Harv Bennett. David Lowry, of course, being the writer, and the credit is due, all due him. We've gone through a phase in which I've been grabbed by the throat, uh, by uh, the studio and by the uh, uh, budget, and had to look at practical things. And now we're into that political phase where humanity now begins to insert itself, where a driver may not show up, where a, an actor may get sick. I mean, all the exigencies and, and, and uh, accidents that uh, making a movie take uh, has, now we're in that phase is taking place. And that wall is the first of the, of the uh, practical things. There's a human being moving that wall into place and a human being is guiding it and, and, and the excitement begins because tomorrow, of the day we're speaking right now, filming begins on a project I've been on for two years. Huh. Captain Kirk is climbing El Cap. But not only climbing, he's free climbing. Free climbing is without ropes, without any uh, uh, securing devices at all. Hands and toes climbing up this granite, seeking energy, strength, and toe and finger holds up 30, 3,000, almost 4,000 feet high in the air. One misstep and, it's, and, 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 he, and, and they fall, free climbers fall. The first scene in the film is our guest star, Cybok, rides in on a polluted planet, which he has to breathe through a breathing device because everything is so polluted, and seeks to convert a, a follower to his way of thinking. The next scene, essentially the opening scene, Captain Kirk is climbing a mountain. Why is he climbing a mountain? I've thought often since I wrote Yosemite, Captain Kirk, free climbing. I, I thought often, why did I come up with that idea? And I had no idea. I had, for the longest time, I, 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 I had no uh, understanding of the subconscious of picking free climbing, which I've never done. I'm, I, I'm fearful of heights. Uh, uh, to me, the, 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 my worst nightmare, as many people's are, is falling. And I've always found it hard to look over the edge of anything two-story building, let alone 3,000, 4,000 feet. And then I began to understand within the context of the film, let alone in real life, what that climb meant. The climb is not just a climb up the rock, but it's a climb, the aspirations to climb, to reach higher than yourself. Man and this human being, uh, Kirk, representing all of man, climbing higher than himself. There's a line uh, in the scene, I am I wish to make this ascent, he says. I'm making an ascent. The meaning of that line, obvious now, taken out of context. Free climbers challenge the rock, challenge themselves. They are at one with the rock. They become part of the rock. There is reason to believe that granite is alive. The crystal formations and the crystal growing, there's reason to think that if crystal can recreate itself, that's one of the criteria of life. And climbers believe that granite is alive and they get energy from the granite. Sun warmed by eons of days in the sun, 
this rock can be thought of as alive. And so they climb this living body, seeking to be part of the living body, aspiring to climb to the top and challenging death and thereby gaining life. And that's what I thought Kirk would be doing. And we treat it in a funny, in a comical fashion. Uh, there is great humor in the scene, and, and that was the reason I discovered for myself that Kirk is on the mountain. And the only place he could be was Yosemite, because this is the Mecca for climbers from all over the world. Friends of mine who've been on that mountain over there have said they have been climbing and have heard languages from all over the world and not heard English. Climbers from every country in the world come to Yosemite to climb El Cap and the mountains around it because it is one of the great climbing places in the, in, in the world. Excellent. Well, in the, um, in the film, when asked by Spock, uh, why are you climbing the mountain? Kirk says, somewhat facetiously, uh, because it's there, uh, a remark attributed to the climber Mallory. Uh, uh, probably did say it, or maybe it was said by every caveman who went above the, the lip of the cave and jumped on the top. And, oh, why are you doing that? It's because it's there, you know. Uh, which is a an answer that it fends off the true emotion of climbing a mountain. The mountain is climbed, yes, because it's there, because otherwise you'd be walking on the plains. But the mountain is climbed because I think the climber wants to hug the mountain. He wants to envelop that mountain within his body. He wants to make love to the mountain. And on its highest and finest level, whether uh, these tough young guys with their sinewy bodies and their uh, one meal a day uh, routine will admit it, there is a passionate affair going on between the climber and the mountain. Why do I climb the mountain? I would say the climber would say, because I'm in love. Now, in order to create that illusion, I, who uh, am aging rapidly even in front of your eyes, uh, and who, as I say, hate heights, uh, could not go up 2,000 feet in the middle of that mountain uh, under any circumstances, let alone insurance. So we've, as I said, created this, uh, this uh, false wall, and that's putting me on the mountain. But in order to put a real climber on the real mountain, we hired a group of some of the most sensational uh, climbers in the world, men who not only climb, but carry 50, 75, 100 pounds on their back. And since everything is balanced on a mountain, since you cling by a hole that big, that's no exaggeration, a quarter of an inch, and that's a major hole on your toe and on your fingers. Imagine what a 75 pound, 50 pound pack on your back does to your, does to your uh, balance. And these guys are climbing. So we've had some of the great climbers in this area, uh, maybe in the world, climbing up to the boot flake of, uh, of uh, El Capitan. And there they lodged and they were shot and they slept over overnight in their tents and things. Incredible stuff. And that's part of the reality of, uh, of uh, what we did. Um, so that married, the illusion is married to the reality and the result, we hope, makes it look like Captain Kirk is 2,000 uh, feet on the face of El Cap. Among the symbols that in, in, in the film, fleeting and elusive and peripheral, the climber with his fingers in teeny cracks in the granite clinging to life. And what a symbol, because we all cling to life by that finger hold as tenuously as the climber does. And we lose our grip sooner or later. It's the passion of the climb in life or on the mountain that really counts, not 
not the number of finger holes or the depth of the finger holes. And by putting Yosemite in our future, in our science fiction movie 300 years from now, by extension, that means that Yosemite exists in its timelessness the short time of 300 years from now. We human beings are rapidly depleting all the value. We're sucking the life out of our planet uh, by our voracious consumption. We have to learn to restrict and, 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 and think smaller. And if 300 years from now, Yosemite exists in its state as it is now, a wilderness area, we therefore by extension say we were able to learn and able to constrain ourselves and life still exists on earth. Cut. I'm going for a really tight. Hold it please. When asked so many times why Star Trek is so popular and why it continues to be popular, I answer because I firmly believe that part of the, th the elements that uh, attract Star Trek to so many people is because of the hopefulness inherent in the stories. And by putting Yosemite in this picture 300 years from now, we are saying humanity has triumphed over the habits that we have fallen into in this age that we have entered into, the habits of consumption, the habits of overpopulation. We have survived. Yosemite and man exist, coexist together. Beautiful. Okay. Thanks. When faced with a, a decision of going someplace, that uh, as, uh, a choice that is offered to Captain Kirk in the movie, he is um, reminded uh, that one of the uh, edicts of the show is to go where no man has gone before. And he makes his choice based on the fact that he, the imperative of to go where no man has gone before, and the climb up El Cap is going, the free climb up El Cap is going where no man has gone before. Okay, um, climbing is usually thought of as an obstacle. The Final Frontier, which is the title of the film, lends itself to many themes. One is going out in a voyage of discovery aboard the Enterprise of literal, physical, technical discovery. And aboard the Enterprise, while we make that journey, the characters go inward and discover things inside themselves, which is the human heart and the possibility that the human heart is the final frontier. The question of what the final frontier is is left open, but one can take from this film, I hope, any one of those aspects, the final frontier being out there or in here or perhaps both. Excellent. Excellent. The Final Frontier, which is the name of the film, is both an outward journey out there aboard the Enterprise uh, on an adventure, and aboard the Enterprise, we characters make an inward journey into the human heart, discovering our psyche and our, the darkness and lightness within us. That journey can either be interpreted as the final frontier in here or the final frontier out there. There is each audience, each person in the audience will take with them their own interpretation.